Welcome to Facts TV News, where everything is true. Shabdan back in custody. Music producer Shabdan, given name Linval Thompson Jr., has been taken into custody by the Joint Anti-Gang Task Force following an operation in St. Catherine South on Friday. The Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF tweeted about the development, stating that Thompson has been identified as a person of interest in the triple murder which occurred in Roseheights, St. James, on May 25th. On the night in question, five people were shot when masked men sprayed them with bullets. One man had died immediately after the shooting, and another two, a man and a woman, died overnight. Thompson was recently freed of gun charges in April of this year, after being arrested in October 2021. According to police reports, members of the Specialized Operations SWAT team searched a vehicle that he and another person was traveling in, and a loaded illegal firearm was found. Both men were subsequently charged and offered bail, which Thompson paid. Thompson had made a name for himself in the music industry and is the owner of Shabdon Records. Morass Fire Leaves Negril Blanketed in Smoke A cloud of thick smoke from a Morass fire has blanketed the resort zone of Negril, creating a smoke nuisance to hotel guests, motorists, and businesses in the area. While firefighters who responded to the fire, which started shortly after 1 p.m., have returned to base, the smoke remains an issue. The Westmoreland Fire Department said it received a call at 1.32 p.m. and one unit from the crew responded and was later backed up by another from Savannah Lamar. In April last year, a massive fire broke out in the era lasting two days. A morass is low, soft, wet ground that contains below-water decomposed materials from plants and animals that often produce marsh gas, which may occasionally self-ignite. Rick's Cafe, CEO freed of DRMA breaches. Chief Executive Officer of Rick's Cafe, Thomas Martin, was freed of breaching the Disaster Risk Management Act. Martin was charged for breaching COVID-19 protocols on May 27 last year. He was freed after the party judge Tamara Green upheld a no-case submission by Queen's County Peter Champagne and attorney at law Javed Grant, who referred to a number of irregularities in the Count's case. The lawyers argued that the prosecution had failed to make out a case against Martin. I am happy that I have been vindicated and the justice system has worked, Martin said after he was acquitted. He also commended his lawyers for the great skill and care they displayed in representing him. I reaffirm my commitment to Rick's Cafe, which has a long and rich history as an inevitable attraction center, not just in Jamaica but internationally, Martin said. The prosecution had led evidence at the trial in the Westmoreland Parish Court that the police, acting on information, went to Rick's Cafe in Nebgill, Westmoreland on May 27 last year and observed that the bar was in operation. It was reported that several COVID-19 rules were not being observed at the establishment. The incident took place at the time when the party series Mocha Fest was being hosted by Rick's Cafe. After the Crown closed its case, the defense lawyer submitted that Martin could not be liable for any alleged breaches because he was not on the property when the police visited the location. The defense lawyers pointed out that a prosecution witness had confirmed that Martin was not on the property when the police arrived. Champigny suggested that there was obviously an incident his at the time of a piece of public sentiments without regarding for proper procedure and investigation. Champigny, in calling for the judge to enter a verdict of acquittal, pointed out that Martin would not have had the mental element to establish guilty knowledge of any alleged breaches. Westmoreland Mechanic charged for fatal during street shooting. Westmoreland mechanic, 29-year-old Nicholas Rubin, otherwise called Evo, has been charged in connection with last month's fatal shooting along Darling Street in Savannah Lamar. Rubin, who is from Maysmere District in Little London, has been charged with shooting with intent and illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. 17-year-old Cavan Wedderburn of Darling Street was killed in the May 9 incident while another male was injured. It is reported that about 8.45 p.m., Wedderburn and the man were standing along the roadway when they were pounced upon by Reuben, who opened gunfire hitting them. They were taken to hospital where Wedderburn was pronounced dead and the man admitted. 
The policy and eyewitness statement implicating Ruben was recorded on May 20 and a warrant was prepared and issued for his arrest. On Wednesday, June 1, Ruben attended the Savannah Lamar police station with his attorney and was thereafter charged for the offences. His court date is being finalised. Don't push the war any further. Residents in Waterhouse St. Andrew on Thursday made impassionate pleas to warring gangsters in the community to quit brokering a truce of drawn potentially devastating act of violence which posed serious threat to their freedom and economic survival. Treasury reporters visited the community on the heels of a series of suspected gang-related shootings and at least one case of arson which caused destruction of a concrete dwelling and displaced a family of six. Totally conscious that the stagnation, which has already begun to blanket the community, will get worse very fast, residents want talks to cancel any plans of prolonging war. A shop owner told reporters that during the past two weeks, gang conflict has given birth to tension and uncertainty throughout the community. He said sales at his shop have dropped as a result. Mood wanted to stop big time. Don't really kind of business middle. Nothing can go on for you. If you have to lock up early, you just have to expect anything at any time. And from that I go on, people now go shoot out. I appeal to the bad boys to behave themselves because serious thing. Right now, you just don't know when it a go done. If it a go done, and how long it a go take. Things are just unsure and not good for nothing at all. Superintendent of Police Kirk Cricket's commanding officer for the St. Andrew South Division told reporters on Thursday, that police would try to put a dent on criminal activities in this space by compiling lists of persons of interest and persons to be questioned in relation to shootings and other suspected gang crimes. According to Ricketts, the police will maintain a round the clock presence in this space until law and order are restored. The air is tense because we have been having some gang type activities in this space for the past two weeks. We are ensuring that we maintain our presence in order to reassure the residents. Our activities are geared at indicting the activities of these individuals. The fire incident still remains in the suspected arson bracket, said Ricketts. An elderly resident lamented how unpredictable and disrupting community wars can be, holding memories of past experiences as a testimony. You are fairly kind of scared, but not really. So much because you know that you and nobody know in a no mix up. When the night was like the worst night of my life, I couldn't watch anything at all on my television because the fire burned off the power line. My TV is my comfort. Tuesday night, a pure shot them did a fire and them did a fear with and I come out of the bed and I get flat. When the morning now, me hear like rain a fall and me look out, we see for rain. When me look, me see one bright light and me realize. House abundant. Me come out and start ball out fire, fire, fire. That was about 5 a.m. Several female residents were strained forward, ensuring that the people are growing more and more afraid to walk about freely in their community. The evidence of that was the community's resemblance of a ghost town, with very little activity on Thursday morning into early afternoon. Nobody now walk up and down because the people are afraid, one woman reported. Another woman who enjoys partying begged for peace. We want peace in the community so we can party and enjoy ourselves. We want be able to carry our children to school without thinking about drive-by and any other shootings. We want peace. We don't want it to go no further. Health Ministry Monitoring Cases of Hand, Foot and Mouth Disease The Ministry of Health and Wellness is reporting that cases of hand, foot and mouth disease are being observed in some schools. Members of the public are encouraged to be guided by following infection, prevention and control measures. Frequent hand washing with soap and water, especially following toilet use and before handling food. Cleaning and disinfecting toys and other high touch surfaces. Avoiding close contact with people who have hand foot and mouth disease. Adults and children can contract the disease, however, children 5 years and under are more susceptible. Persons affected may experience symptoms including fever, loss of appetite, sore throat, and may develop painful sores in the mouth. Rashes may also appear on the palms of the hand and soles of the feet or other areas such as the knees, elbows, and buttocks. 
while there is no specific treatment regimen for hand, foot and mouth disease, the fever and dehydration must be managed. Symptoms of dehydration include sleepiness, dry tongue and dry lips. No tears when crying, sunken eyes, dry skin and less urine than normal. Elevated temperatures in young children must be evaluated by a healthcare practitioner. The health ministry says immediate medical attention must be sought if children experience fever for more than 24 hours or develop signs and symptoms of dehydration. It says children who are sick must remain at home. Jamaica College gets injunction against Old Boys Association President. The Supreme Court granted an injunction blocking President of the Jamaica College Old Boys Association, Major Basu Jarrett, from repeating certain statements as the saga with the school's leadership intensifies. The injunction was sought by the school board in its defamatory case against Jarrett. Justice Brown Beckford encouraged the parties to use alternative dispute resolution mechanisms, such as mediation, to resolve the issue. The injunction will be placed until September 2022 when the matter is scheduled to be heard again or until further orders are made. The suit was brought against Major Jarrett arising from statements he allegedly made in 2021 and 2022. The Caymans are contending that the statements defamed them. But Major Jarrett is tridently opposing the claim. Jamaica College is being represented by Queen's Counsel Michael Hilton and Attorney at Law Timara Mason of the law firm Hilton's Powell. Major Jarrett is being represented by Attorney at Law Jerome Spencer. Meanwhile, the Jamaica College Old Boys Association has reportedly been barred by the school board from having its annual general meeting on the school's compound. A member of the association said, for the last 114 years, the meeting has always been held at the school. The representative said it is very disappointing that the old boys are being banned from having the meeting on the compound. A public fight between the Old Boys Association and the school's leadership emerged last year over decisions relating to former Principal Will Reed and ex-education minister no battling corruption charges. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.